Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Oh, oh, look at that. There's a penny on the floor. There's an old adage that says, find a penny and pick it up and all day long you'll have good luck. Well, how many of you found a penny on the ground today at church? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you saw a penny on the ground at church this morning and didn't pick it up? All right. <laughs> Honesty. Uh, I put 100 pennies on the ground this morning around church. I didn't see 100 hands raised. You know, as a child, I picked up every penny I found. Oh, wow, pennies were worth a lot then, particularly through the eyes of a child. Maybe, maybe it meant a piece of bazooka bubble gum or a piece of penny candy. But today, as some of you now attest, a penny just doesn't attract much attention. Unless your name happens to be Jesus, that is. For him, something we wouldn't even stoop to pick up today just might be a fortune. It was an abundance that he saw. An abundance for the kingdom. Abundance given out of the scarcity of poverty through an abundance of love. It shouldn't amaze us that Jesus always seems to see things differently than the world sees them. Yet, when we hear this story through our modern ears, we, we flinch a little bit. Yeah, we know the leaves turn and the seasons change, and when we hear this widow's might text, we think it must be stewardship season. Well, rest easy. I would like you to think of stewardship differently, because stewardship of God's kingdom is never seasonal. For you, does being a good steward of God's kingdom on earth only matter on five stewardship Sundays a year? No. Rather, the story of the widow's might is really about abundance, not the abundance that the scribes had. They had an abundance of money. But the widow had an abundance of love. For this story really turns our worldview upside down, a worldview that says when something might be scarce, I better get mine and I better hoard it and I better have it all because it may not be in abundance. And yet, the more we have, the more we desire. A fear of scarcity can do that to us. But when we consider scarcity in the eyes of the world, consider that Abundance, when viewed through the eyes of God, might be different. Jesus in the temple that day simply stopped, sat down and watched, sat down and watched. And what he saw was a glimpse of the kingdom on earth. He saw something that no one else saw. The others watched the in crowd, the power people in fine clothes, the ones with riches and abundance the ones with reserved seats in the front row. Those were the people to watch. Those were the ones to envy. After all, their power and riches meant that they must be blessed by God. All eyes turned to watch them. All eyes except Jesus's, that is. And he saw something no one else saw. He saw a minor player in the temple scene liquidate her estate. Something the rich young man, just a few pages earlier in Mark, wasn't able to do. From the scarcity of her life, she showed an abundance of love. In his eyes, his eyes saw an invisible woman doing something out of love without, without being noticed. Her coins probably didn't make enough noise for others in the temple to hear as they dropped into the temple box. Yet because of the abundance of her love, the sound of those coins resonated through the heavens. 
It's hard for us to know why that woman caught Jesus' attention. Sitting there, he saw the rich scribes. Maybe she just looked out of place. A poor widow had no, no standing in society. Maybe, maybe it was the way she paused and let those coins go as her fingers unfurled. Maybe, maybe that was it. She let go of all the security she had. Maybe she, the look that she had on her face was a look of the end for her. She had nothing left. Or maybe, maybe she had the look of abundant love. Yes. Yes, I think that's it. She had the look of abundant love. Her sacrifice was complete. So complete, maybe she reminded Jesus of himself. And he stopped to watch. He watched her sacrifice from the abundance of her love, a sacrifice that he would make himself in just a few days, a sacrifice out of the abundant love of God. Perhaps, perhaps that's why he simply stopped and through her abundant love saw himself and his purpose as he looked at the world as she just let everything go. In our busyness, if we simply stopped and looked at the world, what would our eyes see? Will they see the newest gotta have fashions modeled by some anorexic young woman or muscle bound young man? Or will they see a smile on a volunteer's face as she hands food to a poor family at Backpack for Kids? Will our eyes see the advertisements for the latest gotta have electrical devices that will make our lives better? Or will they see an abused woman and her abused children? Kids hiding so that they may simply have life. Will our eyes see the woman that Jesus saw that day? And when we see her, will we know that we're looking at Christ? I keep thinking, I wish I could see her as I drive around town. It might sound better if I told you that I was looking for her, but that wouldn't be the truth. She probably is not one of the people we would look for. She's more like one of the people we try not to see. But Jesus has pointed her out to us. And now, now it will be harder and harder for us not to see her. The only problem I fear is that maybe I won't recognize her. Maybe she'll be a young woman with a young family wondering if food in a little food pantry is available or if it's empty. Maybe she'll be the elderly man holding on to the hand of his wife as she passes away. She might be an elderly widow giving from her heart while I'm looking at the finery of the world. Perhaps, perhaps she will be something as innocuous as a penny. But when we see her, when we see her, she'll be doing two things for certain. She will be giving something away. Maybe her time, maybe her heart, maybe her living, maybe her life, maybe her love. And what she will be doing won't make sense by the standards of the world. A world that walks by with bigger fish to fry. Whatever she's doing won't be, make sense to us because it will be done not out of scarcity, but out of an abundance of love. Some might look at this table today and see scarcity. Just a little bread, a little wine, hardly worth more than a penny. But I think the woman in the temple long ago would look at this table and see it for what it really is, an abundance of love, an abundance of love, a fortune of grace given to us by Jesus, 
our God on earth. Perhaps, perhaps that's something he learned from the woman in the temple that day. In just a few moments, each of you are going to receive a penny. And I urge you to consider that penny is you. Remember that while it might not seem like much, it was an abundance of love for Jesus. And you, you are an abundance of love for Jesus. Dear friends, stewardship is not seasonal. Stewardship is the result of an abundance of love for God. How will you be an abundance of love for the kingdom today? Amen.